I have been a TDD practitioner for many years after having hated TDD for many years before that. And I've been using TDD on most of my Go projects for as long as I've been doing Go. That's why I was excited to see this book coming out and I'll be reviewing it next. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. And I was so excited when I saw this book was coming out that I pre-ordered a copy and then promptly invited the author onto the Cup of Go podcast where we had a great conversation before I even had a chance to read the book. I'll link in the description if you'd like to hear that. Of course, in true TDD fashion, I wrote this review before I read the book to see if it would live up to expectations. Uh, so let's see how it did. Let's start by talking about who the book is for. Test-driven development in Go is aimed at software developers and testing professionals who want to deliver high-quality and well-tested Go projects. That's according to the book's own description. I would add a little bit, based on my reading of the book, that if you're already experienced with testing or even TDD, uh, the first part of the book will likely be a bit redundant for you, uh, where it just talks about some of the basics. However, even if that describes you, there is still a ton of information in this book that I think will uh, be relevant to virtually anyone. I learned several new things and learned about some new technologies that I will begin to implement uh, in some of my projects. I'll talk about more of that as the, the review goes on. I always like to review the prose style of the books uh, because there's a wide uh, variation. This book is written in a fairly matter-of-fact, step-by-step uh, approach, uh, which I think is appropriate for the content. Uh, no complaints about the prose style here. It's not too dry. It's not too fluffy. Now, the way this book is organized is fairly progressive, meaning that it builds on topics that are covered in earlier chapters. Chapters 1 and 2 cover the basics of testing, unit testing, and, and TDD, and the benefits of TDD. Then chapters 3 and 4 round out the first part, and they cover common third-party libraries, assertion libraries, mocking libraries, and things like that. Then part 2 goes into topics like integration testing and end-to-end -end testing, more sort of holistic types of testing approaches, rather than unit testing, so to speak. And it's in this section where we start to get introduced to some of the concepts that I found to be a little bit more uh, novel or, or, or interesting that I hadn't experienced before. Uh, tools like Ginkgo and GoDog, uh, which are often used for behavior-driven development, or BDD, which I have a little bit less experience with than the more uh, sort of API-focused or, or unit test-focused TDD that I, I usually do. Part two is also where we find chapter seven, entitled Refactoring in Go. And refactoring is such a vital part. Uh, it's both part of the how and the why of test-driven development. So it's, it's really an essential topic. Uh, in fact, it's so important that I could imagine many books being written on the topic. Uh, in fact, there's two that I recommend. Uh, links in the description if you're interested and haven't read those before. Part three is called Advanced Testing Techniques. And this is where we learn about some of the more nitty gritty uh, aspects of testing. Things like how to test concurrency in code or how to test with generics or one of my favorite topics uh, how to do fuzz testing which was added in go 1.18 the progressive nature of this book does mean it's maybe a little bit uh, less than ideal if you're interested in a reference material or something where you can jump around a lot between topics but uh, it's not terrible for that as one example in the section i just mentioned about refactoring uh, the book walks us through some examples of refactoring code that was introduced in an earlier section as a result, uh, in the refactoring chapter, that code is not explained in full detail. Uh, but I don't think that's really a problem uh, unless you're, of course, caught up on some of those details. Then you'll need to go back and read. Uh, otherwise, uh, the concepts are still clear, uh, even if the examples maybe aren't as clear as they might be if you had read the earlier chapters. Let's talk about the content of the book, because that's, of course, the most important uh, aspect here. Uh, what, is, what is and is not included in this book? So first off, this book talks about a ton of different topics, uh, all related to testing, but testing is such a broad topic, uh, there could be many, and indeed there are many books on testing, and there's still more that could be written. So what that means is that although this book does touch on many topics, it doesn't go very in-depth on any of them. As one simple example, the topic of fuzz testing, which I'm excited about, only really gets about four pages in the book. Uh, it's enough to introduce you to the topic, but not enough to make you an expert. So uh, use this book as a way to learn about some new concepts. You will almost certainly want to go further in depth uh, with other material, whether it's other books or online resources for the topics that you find to be particularly relevant to your project. Here's just a quick summary of some of the topics covered in this book. Uh, if any of these are new to you, you will get your money's worth by reading the book. The testing package in Go. Third-party assertion and mocking libraries. Writing table-driven tests. 
behavior-driven development with either Ginkgo or Godog. Contract testing with Pact. This is a topic I was completely unfamiliar with, and I will begin uh, using it after reading the book. Using tests to refactor safely. Writing tests against a live database. Fuzz and property-based testing. Testing concurrent code. And testing with generics. Let's talk about the accuracy. Uh, that's a problem I found in many books, but fortunately not this one. I, I did find a couple of minor like typos or uh, misplaced words. Nothing important. There were a couple of omissions, though, that I, I do think are, are slightly important, so I'll, I'll mention uh, two of those. Um, one is uh, that the book offers several examples of helper functions uh, in your tests, but it never mentions that I could find calling the t.helper function, which you should be doing so that if your test errors, you get a meaningful output. Uh, and the book doesn't mention that. That seems like something fairly basic, probably should have gone in one of the early chapters. And another uh, omission that's potentially a little bit more serious, because it can in some cases uh, be detrimental to your tests, is uh, on pages 54 through 56, we, we're taught about uh, deferring cleanup in tests, uh, but we're never told about the t.cleanup function. And honestly, uh, the t.cleanup function should be used rather than just standard defers, in particular if you're doing your tests in parallel uh, for reasons that are beyond the scope of this video, but I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in a blog post on that topic. So that's really it for the factual uh, omissions or errors. Uh, not much there. It's, it's a factually accurate book as far as I'm concerned, but there are some things that I don't like as much, and I want to talk about that. Go is a fairly opinionated language, and that's potentially one of its strengths. It's also why some people don't like it for some reasons. Um, and it comes sort of prepackaged with a bunch of idioms and conventions that are fairly opinionated and, and kind of well established within the Go community. Some of the advice in this book goes against those conventions. Now, whether that's good or bad, of course, depends on whether or not you personally like those conventions. And I'm not here to pass judgment on you if you disagree with those conventions. However, the book doesn't necessarily explain when it's going against these conventions. Let me just offer two examples. On page 85 uh, in the book, we are told, you should use assertion frameworks to complement the simplicity of the testing package. Now, this is a common view, and many people do use assertion libraries. However, the official advice from the Go wiki says, avoid the use of assert libraries to help your tests. <laughs> so th there's, there's a conflict here. Now, I don't think it's wrong for the book to offer this advice, but it needs to explain that this is contrary to the official advice and offer its reasons would be my, my preference. Now, one other example that's maybe a little uh, less clear-cut uh, is that the book does recommend the use of and, and shows many examples of using uh, third-party mocking libraries. Now, heavy mocking libraries are kind of frowned upon in the Go community. They're often frowned upon, broadly speaking, in the programming community, but specifically in the Go community, they're frowned upon. Uh, so I think this is another example where the author would have done well to explain why she's making these recommendations and why uh, or, or, or in which cases you should take her advice over the sort of traditional convention of don't use mocking libraries. Now, having said that, the book makes a, a conflation uh, of terms, I, I believe, uh, where it talks about mocks in the general sense, which is a very common thing that many people do, uh, without making the distinction between large mocks and simple test stubs. So there's a, a little bit of room there for confusion. Some of the advice being given is actually within uh, the bounds of the Go community, uh, but it's not stated in a way that makes it clear to tell when the author means mocks the heavy version that Go likes to avoid or the light version that Go likes to use. So there's just a little bit of confusion there. Um, the biggest concern I have about this is that somebody who's new to the Go ecosystem, uh, if they take the advice in this book, they may be confused later on when they learn at a new job, for example, that the search and libraries are not, uh, are not used anymore or something like that. Let's talk about the physical characteristics of the book. Uh, tech books these days come in pretty standard format. This is from Pact, a well-known publisher. Their books follow a similar format, uh, mostly black and white, easy to read text. There are a couple of color diagrams and tables. I'm not really sure why. They're not needed. And like mo most of the diagrams are black and white. Here's an example, black and white on one page and color on the other. Um, not a complaint, just an observation. I don't know why that's done that way. Um, so no complaints about the physical characteristics. The book is 300 some pages, uh, including the index. Don't know what else I can say about that. So let me uh, jump to my conclusion now. This book covers a lot of important topics, which means you're almost certain to learn something new, even if you've been testing for years, like I have. That makes it well worth the cover price. Uh, you'll, you'll definitely take something uh, away from this book that you can apply to your current or next project uh, and, and improve 
your productivity. However, the lack of depth on any particular topic does mean that this is not going to be the last book you read or the last material you read on those topics. If you decide you want to do uh, fuzz testing or you want to do mocking or you want to do uh, property-based testing, you will be needing to find additional resources after this book introduces you to that topic. If you're an absolute beginner to either TDD or testing in Go, this book will help get you off on the right foot. Uh, and as I already mentioned, if you already have years of experience, you're almost certain to find something uh, new as well. My only real complaint about this book is, as I mentioned earlier, that sometimes it contradicts the accepted Go convention without an explanation. All in all, I do recommend the book. I do think it's worth reading. And I think practically every Go developer could learn something from this and improve their testing game in Go. If you've enjoyed this, I hope you'll hit the like button. And I enjoy doing these reviews. Let me know what book you'd like me to review next. I already have a list of two or three that I'm working on. So I have a few more reviews coming out soon. Uh, be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you're notified when the next review or other Go-related content comes out. Until then, make it go.